battery replacement for iPad. The tools we're going to need are prying plastic picks, a metallic pry tool that's optional, tweezers, double sided M3 tape, tool kit with a Phillips head screwdriver, and a blow dryer. If you haven't done so, go ahead and power down your iPad. Two connections for the digitizer here and an LCD connection. It opens up in the following orientation. The screen is glued in, so with a blow dryer we'll need to warm up the contours of the iPad to break the seal. Go ahead and do that for about two minutes. Now start prying in and one of the corners, preferably top left, with the plastic prying tool and get that seam going. Once you're in, you can go ahead and keep reapplying the heat and prying again all around the entire contour until the seal is completely broken. Don't rush, this takes a lot of time. Reheating again and again. If you go too fast, you might crack the screen. Once you got it going, Go ahead and start prying it apart like so, very slowly. It should come right out. Breaking the seal is very, very difficult to do without cracking the screen. If you're replacing other parts while you're in there, go ahead and order a replacement screen just to have it on hand in case you crack it. Here's a closer look at the home button cable we mentioned earlier. The following four Phillips head screws at each corner of the LCD need to be removed. The fourth one is tucked away underneath the home cable. I've sped up the trivial four screws removal for the LCD screen. Once you remove those four screws you can go ahead and lift up and gently fold over the LCD on top of the digitizer. We'll need to disconnect the cable. This connection has an eyelash that needs to be popped open as you can see here. Once that's popped open go ahead and remove the tape that's gluing the cable to the socket. Once that tape is removed we can go ahead and start prying left to right and push that cable out like so. With this cable unplugged we can go ahead and lift up the LCD and move it out of the way. Here's a good look how it looks up close. Back to the bottom left corner. To remove the digitizer we need to peel back the tape that's guarding the connection to the home button. Go ahead and lift up that eyelash again very gently. Now with the eyelash lifted you can go ahead and tug the cable out of the way like so. There you go. Now let's move up to the digitizer cable. Go ahead and remove the tape that's guarding the cable to the socket. Now lift up the two lashes, again popping them up gently. With those popped up, you can lift the digitizer and gently peel the cable away from the chassis of the iPad. Be very careful not to rip it. Now you can just disconnect it and that's it. To disconnect the logic board, first remove the guarding tape. Then remove the little glued in plastic bracket. It could just be removed with force. Go ahead and unplug the speaker. Now pop out the antenna. And now the lightning cable connector. The logic board is secured with four screws. Uh, go ahead and remove the two screws that are in the bottom first. The one in the bottom right and then the one in the bottom left. Um, once we get to the top screws, the go ahead and remove the top screw on the left. Uh, remember, the top screw on the right actually has a different function. It connects the battery and the logic board together. So we'll leave that for later. Go ahead and remove the piece of tape guarding the peripherals cable. Go ahead and pop out those eyelashes with your fingernails or an assisting tool. Try not to use a metallic tool like you see here. I've done this many times so I'm pretty experienced but you can damage those sockets if you do it with the metallic tool too fast. Once those eyelashes are up go ahead and pry in gently underneath the cable. Again try it with a plastic tool. 
go ahead and pop out those that peripheral cable once that peripheral cable is loose we can go ahead and remove that fourth screw that connects the logic board to the battery with that screw removed you can go ahead and lift up the logic board and it's out the battery is glued in with six double-sided uh, pieces of tape underneath uh, each cell there are two uh, in the following orientations with your thin prime tool go ahead and start breaking the seal on the double-sided tape go ahead and heat up the battery that's optional if you want don't heat it too much because it could be dangerous uh, and go ahead and start prying in uh, this is like tedious work breaking that seal being very careful not to rip into the battery if you pry into a battery with a metallic tool there's a good chance that it can catch on fire so you want to go underneath you don't want to burst the battery with the tool be very careful go very slow this is a time-consuming process be very careful around that port go ahead and break those six seals once you've broken those six seals you can go ahead and start grabbing grabbing the battery and lifting up on it it should start loosening up you'll hear it crack and once you get it going it should be able to come out just like that battery installation place the battery into its orientation with the double-sided tape installed go ahead and align it flush and make sure it's nice and centered connect the peripherals cable to the logic board first go ahead and push in that connection until you can't see the white lines anymore and clip in those eyelashes make sure those are nice and tight go ahead and lay the board down align it with the battery make sure to secure this connection first once you screwed in uh, that connection and the battery and the logic board are connected go ahead and do the bottom screw and then the bottom left screw and then the top left screw with those four scre screws secure you can go ahead and reconnect the uh, lightning port cable the speaker and then gently the antenna cable go ahead and make sure that that's nice and uh, in there correctly go ahead place back the spacer it should be able to come in there with the residual glue now the connection tape for the reassembly we're essentially following all the steps back backwards go ahead and reconnect the home button cable first that should be relatively easy make sure not to forget the eyelash now go ahead and reconnect the digitizer data cables go ahead and pop them in until you can't see the white lines anymore now with the back of the tweezers <clears throat> apply pressure to close the eyelash we can now go ahead and reinstall the LCD go ahead and lay the LCD down on top of the digitizer grab the LCD cable go ahead and tuck it in until you can't see the white line anymore and push in that eyelash to secure that connection go ahead and flop it back over the battery now make sure not to block off any cables and then the home button cable is not pinched resecure the four Phillips head screws on each corner of the LCD this is optional go ahead and wipe down the screen with a glasses wipe or an anti-static wipe or whatever that you have on hand with the screen clean go ahead and apply the M3 tape around the contour of the digitizer this is double sided tape I've sped up to show you uh, how this is done go ahead and peel that off now you can go ahead and fold it right over but don't fix it completely yet power on the iPad make sure that everything's connected and functioning now go ahead and power it down again reclean the inside of the digitizer now clam it back up this time is going to be for good make sure to adjust everything correctly so that all the seams line up and you get a nice good seal you shouldn't be able to see any cracks at all go ahead and wipe out the uh, fingerprints from the screen and there we go we're all done.